Welcome back to the Gridiron Expert. Just like it was in 2018, the SEC East is on the line this Saturday as number 11 Kentucky takes on the new number one team in the country in the Georgia Bulldogs. Guys, this is going to be a fantastic matchup, a battle between two great defenses. Again, the SEC East on the line. But it should be noted that history has not been kind to Kentucky in this series. The Wildcats have not defeated Georgia since 2009. They've lost every game since then, only two of them coming by one possession. And it should be noted that no one is giving Kentucky a fighting chance in this game. The football power index giving Kentucky a 4.6% chance to win this game. Can the Wildcats storm into Athens, shock the nation, and send a number one team home crying again, just like we saw last week when Texas A&M upset number one Alabama? We are here to break down everything you need to know for this game, guys. Number 11, number one, huge conference implications, huge playoff implications. We've got everything you need to know in our projected winner. But welcome back to the Gridiron Expert, as always. Make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos, and check out everything down in the description below. We have so much exclusive content there for you guys, including our expert picks over on our website, thegridironexpert.com. Some of the best college football and NFL spread picks in the country, guys. We're riding an eight-game winning streak on our NFL picks. Went undefeated in the NFL just last week. We are uh, coming off a 70% week on our college picks. Still some of the best picks in the entire country. One of the best marks in the entire country. Beating out 80% of the national analysts, guys. So if you're not signed up for those picks, make sure to do that today. Our new picks for week seven are coming out today on our website, thegridironexpert.com. Go sign up for those. will be the best decision you make all season long. So let's take a look at these two teams, guys. Again, no one's giving Kentucky a fighting chance. Can the Wildcats pull off maybe the upset of the year and shock the nation? Wouldn't be surprised if it happened with the year that we've been having in college football. But let's start on the offensive side of the ball. Let's start with Kentucky, starting with that road team. Well, when you look at the Wildcats, guys, the offense is gelling. Uh, and I think a lot of it is because they have finally found balance and just because they finally have a competent passing game. You know, For years under Mark Stoops, it was run, 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 and they still want to do that. But they have a competent, capable quarterback that can actually air it out and run a little bit himself in Will Levis. Transferred in from Penn State and has made an immediate impact. Over 1,100 passing yards, 11 touchdowns. Does have six interceptions, but you've seen a drastic change in this Kentucky offense. You've seen them where they haven't been one-dimensional. Everybody knew, oh, Kentucky, all I can do is run. That's not the case anymore. The Wildcats are averaging 31 points per game. They're averaging 197.7 passing yards per game. So Levis, a uh, major reason for that. Really, really helping out this Wildcats offense. I think it's a major reason they're 6-0. I mean, usually you wouldn't see Kentucky put points on many people, the amount of points. But Kentucky has scored at least 28 points in four of the six games they have played this season, including 42 points last week against LSU. The thing is, though, Kentucky still wants to run the ball. While they've got a quarterback, and while they know they have that passing option, and while it gives their offense an extra dynamic, they want to run the ball still because that's what they're best at. And you look at the player they've got running the ball, Chris Rodriguez Jr., 759 yards on the year, five touchdowns, including 147 yards and a touchdown last week against LSU. The Wildcats are averaging 212.7 rushing yards per game. So not a significant difference between the average rushing yards per game and the average passing yards per game, but it's still evident that the ground game is what Kentucky wants to do. They want to be able to enforce their will, own the time of position, run the ball, beat you up front, and maybe later set up that pass with Will Levis. Uh, when you look at Georgia, you know, everybody wants to talk about Georgia's defense, and we will talk about that in a second. Uh, but I think a lot of people tend to forget or, or tend to overlook how well Georgia's offense has been playing, especially considering they've been playing the majority of this season without JT Daniels, who, as we mentioned in the previous video, just can't seem to get healthy. Uh, the Bulldogs, though, are averaging 39.8 points per game. So, yeah, they can play offense pretty much just as well as they can play some defense. They're averaging 235.3 passing yards per game, and, again, the majority of that coming from Stetson Bennett. You know, he was a guy that took over for a good portion of last year in 2020 before JT Daniels started, what, the final four games. JT can't stay healthy. Bennett comes in. So they had a guy with experience, and he's been playing great. 746 yards, eight touchdowns, just two interceptions. Uh, last week against Auburn, 231 yards and two touchdowns. So he's capable of, you know, yeah, I'm just going to keep handing off like they did against Arkansas. Uh, he's also capable of winning the game through the air like he did against Auburn on the road last week. Georgia, of course, like Kentucky, wants to enforce their will on the ground, though. You know, I don't think either of these teams is a pass-first offense. 
Uh, but Georgia knows they can run the ball. They have five 100-yard rushers on the team. That includes Stetson Bennett. But the main one that you have to look at, of course, is their star running back, Enzamir White. 354 yards, six touchdowns on the year. The team's averaging 197.2 rushing yards per game. So this is a team, guys, that, like Kentucky, is very balanced offensively, uh, but you can make the case that they're a little bit faster, a little bit more physical offensively than the Wildcats. Uh, But like Kentucky, Georgia dropping points left and right. I mean, they're averaging nearly 40 points per game. They've scored 34 points in every game, at least 34 points in every game, with the exception of that opener against Clemson that they won 10-3. Very, very scary, guys. So teams that both these teams can put up the points. Both these teams are balanced. It's just going to be a matter of really which defense prevents the other's offense from maintaining that balance. And you look at Kentucky's defense. You know, everybody wants to dog on them, and no one's really giving them much attention. Kentucky's defense for the last few years under Mark Stoops has always been strong, and this year is no exception. They're allowing just 17.5 points per game so far this year. So six games, allowing 17.5 points per game. They're allowing just 305 total yards per game. We always say on the channel, look, if you can hold a team on average, if your average is less than about 300 yards per game or less, you're doing a really good job. So Kentucky, just slightly above that, still a pretty dang good job. They're allowing 193.7 passing yards per game, 111.3 rushing yards per game. Uh, And so you could make the case, right, that with Kentucky's strong rushing defense, that Georgia might struggle on the ground, right? You could make that case that, hey, Kentucky, they're pretty stingy up front. This might be a game that Georgia has to win through the air. But I could come back and and argue that with you and say, okay, we thought that about Arkansas and Auburn too. Arkansas's rushing defense was pretty stout. Auburn's rushing defense was relatively stout. Georgia rushed for over 200 yards on both the Razorbacks and the Tigers. So Kentucky, what they're going to have to do is they're going to have to play a dang near perfect game. They're going to definitely have to bottle up the run, hold Georgia definitely well below 200 rushing yards, and then they're going to have to get back there and disrupt Stetson Bennett. And that's what the Wildcats want to do, right? They're a team that wants to rely on that front seven. Secondary is usually pretty solid, but get rely on that front seven to disrupt. Get some negative plays in the backfield, stuff the run, pressure the quarterback a little bit. The Wildcats have 13 sacks on the year, but only four takeaways. So disruption, tackles for losses, sacks, pressure, they can do that, and they're going to have to do that. But they're also going to have to find a way to create turnovers too, because you're not going to walk into Athens and win this game without winning the turnover battle. It's not going to happen. So Kentucky's got to find a way to do that. When you look at Georgia, what is there to say, guys? They are the best defense in the country. Some are even calling it maybe the best defense in college football history. And I would not go too far to argue that. I really wouldn't. This Georgia defense is ridiculous. The Bulldogs are like 5.5 points per game. You know, within two, three games, you go, okay, those numbers will increase. We're halfway through the season. They've played six games, and they're only allowing five and a half points per game. They're only allowing 201.2 total yards per game. This defense, guys, is unreal. 137 passing yards per game, just 64.2 rushing yards per game. So Chris Rodriguez in this Kentucky uh, rushing offense that was averaging over 200 rushing yards per game, you can forget it. We've stressed it time and time again. You can't beat Georgia on the ground. It's not going to happen. So if you're an offensive coordinator or you're a head coach, you might as well just throw those plays out of your playbook. Because if you want to beat Georgia, you've got to win through the air. Yes, sprinkle a few runs in there, sure. But you've got to beat them through the air, and you have to beat them vertically. You can't go screen passes. You can't do little drag runs. You have to go down the field through the air if you want to beat Georgia. And a lot of people don't seem to understand that. You know, people, you know, as Mike Leach used to say, people ask about balance. You know, 50% run, 50% pass. He thinks that's 50% stupid. When you're playing a team like Georgia, there is no balance. You have to go all out through the air because you cannot run on them. The numbers are ridiculous for Georgia. The Bulldogs, on top of everything we just mentioned, 22 sacks on the year. They have 10 turnovers on the year. It's so difficult to move on them. I mean, guys, take this for example. Auburn scored 10 points on them last week. That was just the second touchdown that Georgia had allowed all year long. The second offensive touchdown they allowed all year long. And again, like we mentioned, you could make an argument, guys, that Arkansas's offense and Auburn's offense were better and are better than Kentucky's offense. You could make that argument. They might all be kind of clumped together, but you can make the argument that the Razorbacks and the Tigers were better offensively than Georgia or than Kentucky, and Arkansas put up zero, Auburn only put up 10, each losing by over 24 points, or 24 points at least. So, guys, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a tough battle. Georgia's defense, guys, we could harp on it. We could talk about it all day long because they're fun to watch. They're ridiculous. They're historic. It's insane, and you can't help but wonder if anybody ever going to be able to put up more than 14 points. 
on the Bulldogs. You have to wonder that. So you look at our final analysis, guys. You know, we don't want to go too quick here, but it's very evident who we're going to pick. We're picking Georgia, right? How can you not pick the number one team in the country, especially at home? No disrespect to Kentucky at all, right? All the credit in the world to Mark Stoops and the Wildcats and what they've done. Sitting at 6-0 with, seriously, a good chance to finish 11-1 with the only loss coming this Saturday to Georgia. Because the rest of the schedule is favorable for Kentucky, and I do believe this is a good football team. Solid offense, solid defense. They're disciplined. They play well. They play together as a team. It, it's a great system that Mark Stoops has going in Lexington. But you're going up against a Georgia team that, again, is much bigger than you. They're more physical than you. And I believe there is a talent gap there. Much like we saw back in 2018, guys. Same type of scenario here. You know, top 10, top 15 matchup between Kentucky and Georgia. The Wildcats hosted that game. SEC East on the line. And the Wildcats lost at home 34-17. Georgia is simply too good, guys, and they are simply too good on defense. I don't see Kentucky having much success running the ball. I don't see Kentucky having much success getting the ball down the field. They might be able to score 10 points like Auburn did, but that might be pushing it. At the end of the day, though, Georgia will win this game by double digits. They will continue to flex their muscles, showing, hey, we're the best defense in the country. We're also the best team in the country, and they will not relinquish that number one spot, maybe, for the entirety of this season. It's really crazy to think about, guys, but Georgia, the best team in the land, and they're going to once again show it on Saturday. So, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching us here at the Gridiron Expert on YouTube. Make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, and share our videos. And, of course, check out everything down in the description below. Make sure to go sign up for those expert picks today. New picks were just released on our website over on thegridironexpert.com. So go sign up for them. It will be one of the best decisions you make all season long because they're the best picks in the land. Just like Georgia, best team in the land, our picks Exactly. Some of the best in the land. So make sure you go sign up for those today. You will not regret it. And once again, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. And we'll see you next time right here on the Gridiron Expert.